All right, guys, welcome back. So I'm going to start doing coaching with coffee again, I think. I think. This is my first interview since I've uh, discontinued coaching with coffee, but we're bringing it back. So um, today I'm actually interviewing the Saucony Soc rep, uh, Joshua. So he's the tech rep. So he will give us a little bit of a rundown on the new shoes coming out. And, uh, but first I want to talk about his running and kind of uh, what he does typically and what he's trying to training for and what he's been doing. Um, Cause I, you just came back from a stress fracture pretty recently. Yeah, so I had a, a metatarsal stress fracture in uh, early July. Took me out for nine straight weeks. So starting to come back from that and uh, everything's been pretty smooth so far, which is nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's good. Uh, anything you're training for in particular? Or? Yeah, so um, I have the Behind the Rocks 50K coming up in Moab. That'll be in March. That's kind of the first tune-up to see how I feel. And then I have Leadville 100 in August as my A race. So, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Leadville 100. That, that, that race is insane. Yeah. From, from what I've heard, I've never done it. but <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm pretty excited. Um, definitely like an iconic Colorado race. And as, you know, a trail runner, I feel like it's something you got to do. So nice. What do you, uh, what does your preparation look like for that race? Like typically, what are you, what are you looking to do? What kind of runs are you looking to hit mileage, stuff like that? Sure. So I live in Boulder and so, uh, very fortunate to have access to a lot of trails and a lot of vertical gain for my training runs. And for a race like Leadville, I think, you know, I'm, I'm obviously going to try to hit some higher mileage weeks. Um, Probably nothing over 80 miles though, uh, because I want to have a lot of vertical gain mixed in there as well. A lot nice. of climbing, um, just feel confident running on the hills. Uh, Leadville is a pretty runnable course, but because of the elevation, um, you really have to to work that cardio. So Sure. Yeah. I mean, when I ran the Leadville heavy half, that was definitely like... Yeah, like breathe, you're breathing pretty hard when you got to the top of like Mosquito Pass and stuff. So you, definitely. Yeah. So um, what do you I guess looking at ultra training, do you mm -hmm. want to talk a little bit more about how you approach mileage and vert? Like I know a lot of ultra runners actually are more focused on vert. And it sounds like that's what you're doing as well. How do you keep track of that or how do you what do you do to keep track of your vert? Sure. So, um, yeah, it, it all depends on what kind of race you're doing. You know, I for ultras, it's. I always say train for the race, not for the distance. So, you know, a hundred miler at Leadville is going to be very different than, you know, a hundred miler if you're on flatland in Texas, you know, they're both going to have their challenges, but you have to train for those races specifically. I'm pretty basic. I use Strava, you know, a lot to track all the data. Um, I've had really good luck with their pro platform. Nice. But for me personally, with all the vert and um, time spent on feet, it's, ultimately less about just that pure volume. You know, I could be spending the same amount of time on feet with, you know, twice the vert as somebody who's doing maybe a hundred mile weeks uh, on road, and I'm still getting the same amount of time with lower mileage. So yeah. it's all about kind of tracking that and simulating the course is huge. You know, Leadville's just under 20,000 feet of gain throughout the course of the race. Obviously not going out and trying to get that in one run, yeah. but, you know, simulate what the body is going to feel like with that fatigue over the course of, you know, a week or two weeks of training. Nice. Yeah. So I guess you're, you're hitting 80 miles a week. Typically when I hit 80 miles a week, I'm probably 16, 17 miles off of my long run. What does your long runs look like? What are you thinking? I mean, it's going to time on feet, obviously, but what do you, what do you think mileage wise does the long runs look like? Sure. So I usually like to get in at least like probably a five or six hour run. So something in that, you know, 30 to 40 mile range is my long run. It's almost like half your mileage. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's, you know, definitely, uh, you know, it, it, it's what works for me and it's worked in the past. Not always something for everybody to have that large of a chunk of mileage in one run. But for me, I find that my body responds well to putting it through that sort of trauma and then pulling back for a little bit and then doing it again. Also, the back-to-backs are huge. So if I'm not going to be doing, you know, a 30-mile run followed by maybe a shorter, like a 10 or a 13-mile run on the next day, maybe doing two, like maybe a 20-miler followed by a 15-miler, things like that, just to, to have that experience of what the body's going to feel like in those later stages of the race. Nice. Yeah. Fatiguing the legs. Mm -hmm. like that, so. so I guess we'll probably just move on so we don't take up all the time sure. just talking about uh, running, but yeah. uh, I'll probably link, uh, you, are you okay with uh, me linking your Strava in the description? Yeah, definitely. Cool. I'll link uh, Joshua's Strava in the description. You guys can check out his training, his mileage there. Again, he's coming back from 
A stress fracture, it sounds like you're pretty much back by now, but yeah, yeah just trying to ramp up the mileage, it sounds like, right? Definitely. So, cool. Yeah, you guys can follow them down below in the link or the script. The link in the description below. There we go. Nice. All right, guys, we had a brief intermission right there, um, but we're back. And Joshua was going to talk about uh, the new shoes kind of come out by Saucony, kind of what the new technology and stuff kind of looks like. Uh, pretty brief, briefly, though, because we're mm -hmm. not going to go way into depth, but we'll, I'll make a video more in depth when those shoes release or when they're about to release too. So um, I kind of like Joshua kind of start off and what's the first shoe you have? So the today? first shoe that should be hitting um, in February would be the Peregrine. Amazing update on that. The Peregrine's gonna see a good loss of weight, which is very exciting. It's gonna go back to being that more nimble, speedy, lightweight trail runner for really technical trails. So yes. I'm personally super excited about that one. Then we'll be seeing updates from the ride and the guide. Those should be landing somewhere in April. Very exciting updates on those guys. Uh, they're gaining a little bit of stack height to them, getting a little bit of that roll in the forefoot. Not full speed roll on there, but you can definitely see some of the endorphin DNA bleeding into the new ride and guide, which is very exciting. Guide is still gonna have solid posting under the arch. It's gonna be a lot lighter weight than the previous model as well. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah. The, uh... I feel like Saucony's all kind of making their shoes very interchangeable almost. Like this, the more of like the roll in the toes now, kind of like all these, um, like the endorphin speed and all that. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's good to hear. I mean, yeah. you can like switch out the shoes a little bit easier and be a little bit more familiar, I guess. So Definitely, yeah. Something that um, is going to be big is our brand is still going to be very approachable for all runners at all levels. But you are going to see a little bit more of that endorphin bleeding into the regular daily trainers, just giving you that a little bit more pep in your step whether you know you're running in the guide to the Endorphin Pro. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Uh, the Freedom will be seeing an update somewhere in that April range as well, which is very exciting. Still has that power run PB, so it's gonna stay pretty consistent with some minor updates and tweaks in the upper. The big, most exciting one hitting in April is gonna be the Tempest. The Tempest is a new shoe for us. It's gonna be a lightweight, fast stability trainer. So it's gonna be a dual foam chassis with power run and power run pb so it's going to allow stability runners who might not otherwise have been able to be comfortable in the uh, endorphin speed or endorphin pro without that stability posting to feel that power run pb experience to feel fast to feel you know that speed roll turnover in a stability shoe um, the power run acts under that arch as a really nice denser foam to keep everything nice and neutral while being incredibly light as well, so. Yeah, I feel like that's a, a common thing that a lot of stability, or people who are in stability shoes, myself included actually, don't really enjoy about the stability shoes. You add that extra weight mm -hmm. um, with the traditional, do we have a stability shoe here? I didn't grab Oh one. no, we didn't grab one. okay. But as you guys, if you guys can see all my like, my guide video, and I've done a couple of videos on stability shoes, um, like the guide has that, I'm just gonna grab a stability shoe. Yeah. <laughs> Pause. All right, so if we're kind of looking, yeah, right here at the stability shoes, we got this denser piece of like TPU plastic, right? Mm -hmm. So a TPU plastic on the inside of, this is actually the Hurricane, the one that the Tempest is gonna ki kind of replace, but not really, because mm -hmm. you guys are gonna, still gonna have this around for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so the, uh, the Tempest is, like, I guess, eventually gonna hopefully replace this shoe, I guess is yeah. what you guys are saying. Um, but you have this denser piece right here, and that just adds a lot of extra weight to the shoe typically. And what you're saying is the Power Run PB, isn't that a lighter weight foam? Yeah, so the Power Run PB is our lightest, fastest, most responsive foam. Nice, and then you're basically gonna use this regular Power Run that you guys already use, right? Oh, well, it'll be the Power Run, like what's found in like the Ride or the Guide. Okay, the Ride or the Guide. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we're, we're talking about more of the Power Run that's found in the Ride and the Guide, which is a little bit denser uh, material. So on that inside, instead of having this posting piece, you're gonna have a denser, the denser material is actually gonna be the Power Run, which is their nice, responsive, mm -hmm. Foam, right? Yep. Like the one that um, used in the guide and the ride. And then on the outside here is where I take it you're going to do the plus a little bit more, right? Yeah, a little or bit the, more of the, the PB. PB sorry, yeah, the PB. And, and it's going to be pretty interesting. It's like kind of woven together. So you'll see the Power Run and the Power Run PB woven throughout. So nice. up in the forefoot, there'll be Power Run right along towards the outsole. And then up under the foot is going to be that Power Run PB. And in the heel, it's going to be almost reversed. So more power run PB down towards the ground and more power run right under that foot or right under the heel. And then on that lateral or, yeah, that medial side, you'll see kind of a slight buildup extra there, but it'll still be woven through on the forefoot and the heel. 
Um, so it's this really beautiful balance of these two foams brought together to give this just really exciting, like energetic ride while still being very stable. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm super stoked about just like that, that lightweight, energetic mm -hmm. feel that you get with a neutral shoe or a lot of stability shoes you can't. And then they're going to have that stability version. Mm -hmm. Excited to see how that's going to work. We'll probably test it out, put it through its paces a little bit yeah. um, in another video. But um, yeah, super stoked for that. So is there anything else you wanted to kind of go over in terms of Saucony? Um, um, anything new releases, anything cool? So uh, we do have some very excited updates for uh, fall 22 as well. Um, I can't go too much into those. They're still under wraps, but <laughs> I'm sure there's been some leaked photos online of the new Endorphin series and the Endorphin Edge, which is our um, Endorphin trail shoe that'll be coming out in uh, August 22, which... Oh, wow. I personally am so excited about. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be a, a pretty incredible product. Um, nice. But uh, the big thing is we're just really leaning into the heritage, you know, Saucony being the original running company. We're really just leaning into that this year, uh, which I'm super excited about and uh, got some really awesome collaborations coming as well with the originals. So it's just going to be a super exciting year for the brand. Yeah, awesome. Um, one more thing, actually. I, I heard you talking to... to Andrew or Drew about this, mm -hmm. um, about the uh, logo. Can you, do, I've heard this a couple times now, so I just wanna, can you go over it again for, uh, for of, uh, my viewers too? Of course, yeah, yes. Yeah. So um, a little bit since I was talking about that heritage piece, um, Saucony was founded in 1898. We are the original running company. So um, it is in our blood, it's in our roots. Um, and a lot of people might not know this, but our logo here is actually the Saucony Creek. And the three dots inside of it are the three boulders that we stand by as a brand. They stand for good health, good performance, and good community. So all of the decisions we make as a company, all of the design changes, um, they filter through those lenses. How is this good performance, good health, and good community? Something I'm most excited for with that personally is where we're going with sustainability. We have some really awesome stuff coming in that direction because, you know, good community, this this planet is our biggest community. And so how are we taking part and in interacting with that as well? So definitely cool to have those as our foundations because I know for me as a runner and as a person on this earth, those are things I really care about. So very excited about that. Nice, yeah, I feel like that's a, a common thing with shoes are kind of wasteful if you think about it. Like you use up a shoe and then you just throw it in the trash or something. Yeah, just mm -hmm. add to a landfill. We do have shoe donations and everything as well. At the Roost, if you guys ever want to stop by, we use a couple different companies and brands for that. I, I think we use Soul, Soul for, Souls for Souls mm -hmm. as our first one. And then we do have some like homeless shelters who pick up shoes as well. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have any extra shoes, don't throw them in the landfill, just uh, donate them so we can uh, reuse them. But then yeah, Saucony's also making some that are gonna be a little bit more environment, environmentally friendly, it sounds like, mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, um, and, and something that gets me super excited too is our engineering team in particular are really passionate about not only how can we make a shoe that's more sustainable and you know it's really cool if we can make a shoe that you just put in the ground and it biodegrades but um, how does the actual build process affect the environment and so oh, well. the Saucony team's been really focused on how is the entire process from you know building the midsole to fusing the outsole how much heat is created how much water is used um, taking those things into consideration because any brand can build a shoe that is super sustainable, but it's about how does that process, that bigger picture affect our environment. So oh, yeah. very passionate about that as well. Uh, I didn't even think about that. That's a good, yeah. uh, very good point. Uh, <laughs> it's cool stuff yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, anything else you wanted to add or you, uh, we got, yeah. like a lot, we got a lot of information out of you already. So. Yeah, got a lot of information. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah. This was awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and yeah, it's just 22 is going to be a huge year for Saucony. So um, stay tuned. It's got some cool stuff coming out. Awesome. Yeah, we're we're excited. I guess I am. I'm super stoked for yeah. all the new updates and everything. Um, thanks. Thanks for uh, let me interview you. And uh, if you guys want to follow Joshua again, links below. So, yep, his Strava, right below. And then uh, subscribe if you guys want to catch more content like this. Hit the bell notification. That will uh, notify you when I post new content like this. And uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, just give it a thumbs up. Uh, we'll catch you guys later. Peace. Peace. Awesome.